Strathcona. And I'd like to thank John, uh, to congratulate the member from Edmonton St. Albert for his re-election. And I enjoy the flights back and forth to Alberta and Ottawa with him on a regular basis. <laughs> Healthcare is the number one issue in the province of Alberta. Um, access to universal health care, public health care, is of course one of those necessarily public services. Many in Edmonton, as across Canada, still lack access to a family doctor. Recently, information has been revealed, allegations made by the former head of the Alberta Health Authority, that privilege access to um, doctors and, and specialized uh, medical services may be being provided by the Alberta government. I am th that, of course, would be a potential violation of the Canada Health Act. I'm wondering if the Honourable Member has raised these issues and concerns raised by the, uh, his constituents in Edmonton about these allegations and about the fact that there is a lack of access to family physicians and whether or not he su has suggested that the Minister of Health ought to look into these allegations. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, St. Albert. Well, thank you, and I thank the Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Uh, for the question and also uh, congratulate her for her re-election to this house. As the Honourable Member knows and as many members of this house know, I was a former member of the Alberta Legislature uh, serving Calder from 2001 to 2004. At about the time when some of these allegations have now been made regarding privileged access to, to physicians. I have seen no evidence that this has occurred and I certainly invite the Honourable Member or uh, the Honourable Member of the Alberta Legislature who believes that this is the case, you know, to bring forward this, uh, this evidence because at this point they're only unsubstantiated allegations. Healthcare is certainly an issue to uh, my constituents as I'm sure as I'm confident it is to hers. Um, this government of course has given uh, student loan relief to physicians and to nurses who are prepared to remote to uh, relocate into more remote parts of, of uh, Canada where physicians and nurses are sadly lacking and I think that's an important first step to solving the healthcare crisis. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Tobik Maktaqua. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to say uh, welcome and congratulations to my colleague from Edmonton, St. Albert, on his victory on May 2nd. He did talk a little bit about the operating review, Mr. Speaker, and I think it's, a, it's an important point because as we've seen in New Brunswick, we have a significant export economy, especially to the U.S., and we've seen a lot of our small businesses have seen a dramatic increase, of course, in the Canadian dollar. And also with the, with the recession, they were forced to really trim their budgets. They were forced to really look at all their expenses, find all the efficiencies that they could actually find in order to continue to make profit or to minimize and allow them to get over this hump. I just asked my honorable friend, does, does he not think, and he talked a little bit about this operating review, that governments, the federal government as well as the provincial government, have a responsibility to do the exact same thing that we ask small business to do. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, St. Albert. Uh, thank you to my Honourable colleague for the good question and similarly congratulate him on his re-election to this House. Certainly, Mr. Speaker, Canadians expect their government to operate similarly to the way households operate or the way small businesses operate. One must operate w within one's means. You can't uh, structurally spend more than you take in, whether it's a, a family with a wage earner or a business with revenue. Uh, revenue, it, it's fine to incur deficits over the short term and, and certainly given the economic downturn uh, we incurred temporary uh, stimulus funding deficits to kickstart the Canadian economy, but that is not a long-term plan. So yes, Canadians expect their government to act similarly to small business sort of families, to live within their means, and uh, to live within balanced budgets. That's the key, the key to economic prosperity over the long term. Thank you. Resuming debate.